Okay, guys, time for us to get started on our chapter 10. Uh, I got my trash hat. Feeling good. Feeling fresh. Time for us to get started. Okay, uh, we're looking at the packet. I've already filled out a little bit of this for you, uh, or for us. Really, This is all for us. Uh, so we're going to get going. Here we go. Okay, we got Mythbusters is an investigated investigated this question. Uh, here's a brief recap. Each subject was placed in a booth for an extended period of time and monitored by hidden camera. Thirty four subjects were given a yawn seed, one by by one of the experimenters. That is, the experimenter yawned in the subject's presence before leaving the room. Leaving the room, the remaining sixteen subjects were given no yawn seed. So first of all, describe the outline of Mythbusters experiment or draw an outline. Here's our outline. We got those 50 subjects. We're going to randomize them with an SRS and that will get us to group one and group two. Group one has 34 subjects. Group two has 16 subjects. Group one will get a yawn seed. Group two will get no yawn seed. And at the end, we're going to compare uh, we're going to compare the proportion of subjects that yawned, really, so we can go a little further there. Well, this kind of is at the limit of what we can do statistically at this point, because we have two groups instead of the one group that we had been doing in Chapter 9. So with two groups, especially two groups of unequal size, you'll notice 34 and 16. Uh, well, how do you deal with that? How do you calculate any statistics? Well, we're going to try that now. So, first of all, what about the MythBuster results? The results are, first of all, uh, if they were given the yawn seed, 10 out of 16, or sorry, 10 out of 34 yawned. If they were not given the yawn seed, then 4 out of 16 yawned. In total, if you add things together, you got 14 out of the 15 subjects yawned. Now that sounds like, yeah, Ferrario, you're just adding stuff together, but that's going to come uh, into play a little bit later. P1, we're going to call that the true proportion of people who would yawn given a yawn seed, and that P1 is 10 out of 34. I think you can see that in yellow. P2 is the true proportion of people who will yawn given no yawn seed. So P2 hat is equal to 4 out of 16. Uh, I'm not sure if I called that first one P1 hat, but that is a P1 hat. That's an estimation from experimental data. So what is the difference in proportions? Well, if you just subtracted, and um, I did subtract. Look at that. I even did that on my calculator. That's 0 0.0441. 0 0.0441. Neat. So does that data provide some evidence that yawning is contagious? Contagious. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, P1 is bigger than P P1 hat is bigger than P2 hat. So there's your evidence that P1 is greater than P2. Does that mean P1 is greater than P2? Well, I don't know. That seems really simple. Um, and if it seems like something we could have answered without statistics, then you know, what are we doing in statistics? Which brings us to four. Adam Savage and Jamie Heinemann. I don't know how to say their names. Those are the hosts of, Co of Mythbusters, and they use this data to conclude that yawning is contagious. So do you agree? Well, I said it looks like it, but what about randomness? What about sampling variability? Does all that play a factor here? I mean... 34 and 16, those aren't really big samples. So how do we know? So uh, what is this? Oh, this, but oh no, I remember what happened. So when we come over here, I forgot that I have two columns here. Uh, in this experiment, your class is going to investigate whether the results of the experiment are statistically significant or if they could have occurred purely by chance due to random assignment, because that's really what we're saying here. So null hypothesis, we haven't even talked about this, but we're going to attempt a null hypothesis, H naught. 
that would be that P1 is equal to P2. Or P1 minus P2 is equal to 0. Either one of those work. And as you can see, mathematically, they are equivalent. So the true proportion of people who would yawn with the yawn seed is equal to the true proportion of people who would yawn without the yawn seed. We're trying to prove, we might as well put it down now, we're trying to prove that the people who would uh, yawn with the yawn seed the proportion of people who would yawn with the yawn seed is greater than the proportion of people who would yawn without the yawn seed. So that is our that would be our alternative hypothesis, but we're not there yet. But maybe it's a good thing to look at it. Okay, so we're going to shuffle 50 cards, put them into two piles. One group of 34 will get the yawn seed. The other group, 16, will not get the yawn seed. Record this proportion and do this three times. Well, you know, one of the unfortunate things is we're not in class, and I can't give you those cards. I do have those cards. I do use them. But uh, given the circumstances, we're going to have to make do with what we have. So what we have is a calculator. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that the numbers 1 through 14, is there are there 14, 14 people who yawned? Yeah, a total of 14 people yawned. So we're saying people with ID numbers 1 through 14, those are going to be the yawners. 15 through 50, those are the non-yawners. And we're going to assign them into groups uh, using um, our calculator. So let's see. Let's do a random, we're going to do a random integer. And I think we should do no repeat here. We'll go 150, and we're just going to do all of them, all 50, because I think this is how it would work for those of you who have um, calculators that uh, were the wonky random, er, random integer no repeats. So let's paste that. And then let's take that immediately, and let's put that in L1, because I want to be able to look through that list. Let's take a look at that. All right, so those numbers are now in L1. And when I look at that list, I'm going to take the first 34 entries, and I'm going to count how many of the yawners are in the first 34 entries. Remember, the yawners are anything 1 through 14. So let's take a look. All right, we're going to look at the first 34. No, 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 no. Yes, so we got one yawner. Oh, sorry, we got two yawners. Three yawners, four yawners. Five yawners. six yawners, seven yawners, eight yawners. So we got eight yawners out of those 34. Proportion of people who in the in that group in the yawn seed, well, eight out of 34. Which means that six of those 16 didn't yawn. Because remember, there were 14 yawners. So if eight of them were in the first group, then six of them were in the second group. Uh, let's figure out the difference in proportion. 8 out of 34 minus 6 out of 16. 8 out of 34 minus 6 out of 16. So that's negative uh, 0.14. Negative 0.14.
Okay, so take this opportunity, pause the video, and go ahead and come up with two of your own. I'm going to do two of my own. I'll pause the video too, and we'll see. Let's come back. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone and I've done my experiment two more times. You will do two, your two more times, and you're going to combine it with some data over here to make a dot plot. So here's the data I have over here. Uh, we did this uh, 27 times. So you can go ahead and pause it right here to make your dot plot. Um, I'm going to pause it as well and make my dot plot. So dot plot. Okay, so we had some problems down at the factory. Uh, this is, I think, my third time through the data. Uh, just me forgetting to push play and record and unpause and all that stuff. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, if this seems kind of disjointed, then, well, now you know why. Anyways, we should get back to this. No one really needs to know any of that stuff, I imagine. So uh, here we have the dot plot. Uh, hopefully yours looks a lot like mine. I know you're supposed to have two points that are different than mine. Maybe they were the same. I don't know. Uh, what we have highlighted over here on the right side, in this region, all the proportions are greater than or equal to 0 0.04, which you remember 0 0.04 was the number that they got over in Mythbusters. So um, what this says is that 12 times out of our 30 exper 12 out of our 30 experiments, virtual experiments really, we got um, we got a proportion that was equal to or greater than the Mythbuster proportion. So if we take the assumption that there is no difference between uh, yawners and non-yawners, if we take that assumption to be true, then we would get ex values um, that exceeded 4% 40% of the time. So really it's not that rare that it would happen. Uh, if there was no difference between the yawners and the non-yawners. So what does that mean? Well, it means we don't have evidence for the alternative hypothesis. The data doesn't support that yawning is contagious. Now, we're not saying that yawning isn't contagious. We're saying that with our experiment, we weren't able to prove that it was uh, contagious, or at least our data didn't show that uh, we didn't produce data which we didn't produce data that um, showed some kind of uh, a difference between the two. So, is yawning contagious? I don't know. What do you think? Moving on to the next thing in our um, agenda, we've got the important ideas for this section, which is the shape, center, and spread of the sampling variability for P1 minus p2 hats. So shape, approximately normal if large counts hold true. That is those four things right down there. It's basically doing large counts twice, one for sample one and one for sample two. Um, center, uh, mu p1 hat minus p2 hat. That's just p1 minus p2. In experimental uh, in the actual experiment or in an actual significance test, you would take that number from H naught, and guess what? That number is pretty much going to always be zero. Spread. Uh, I hate saying spread because it makes me think about like uh, Miracle Whip, and I don't like Miracle Whip. Um, anyways, P1 hat minus P2 hat sigma of. That is this formula for adding together two variances then square rooting it together, which as we know, if we have normal distributions, uh, that is the way that you would add or find the standard deviation of a combination of two normal distributions by adding and square rooting the variances. Special note at the bottom, uh, some those of you who haven't used Q, uh, Q is just 1 minus P, and uh, when we're writing a lot of stuff like we are now, it's a lot easier just to write a Q than a 1 minus P. It just feels a lot less frustrating. So we're going to be probably using that a lot. Let's get to this check your understanding business.
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to say that if you need to copy this stuff down, you should pause uh, while you're pause. You're going to pause it while I'm making a stupid face. So you get my stupid face. So you're ready. Three, two, one, pause. Cool. Uh, check your understanding. Your teacher brings two bags of colored goldfish into class. One bag has 25% crackers, red crackers. The other bag has 35% red crackers. I hate to be the guy who had to measure that. Uh, each bag contains a thousand crackers. I really don't want to be that person now. Uh, using a paper cup, your teacher takes an SRS of 50 crackers from bag one and a separate SRS of 40 crackers from bag two. Let P1 minus P2 hats be the difference in sample proportions. What is the shape of that sampling distribution? Again, we, I filled this out ahead of time. Uh, I found N1, P1 is 12.5, which means that N1, Q1 is 37.5. I found N2P2 is 14, which means N2Q2 is 26. All of that stuff is greater than 10, so we've got a normal sampling distribution, or at least an approximately normal sampling distribution. Uh, why? Well, we just did the large counts condition. That's why I wrote large counts. So if we satisfy the large counts condition, we've got an approximately normal sampling distribution. Sounds good? I thought so. Part B. Ah, oh, I didn't want to do that. Oh no. Part B. Find the mean of the sampling distribution. The mean of the sampling distribution, which we notate as mu p1 hat minus p2 hat, that's just p1 minus p2. And if we know that's 25 and 35, then uh, mu p1 hat minus p2 hat is 0.10. Calculate and interpret that standard deviation. Okay, uh, there's that same formula that we I just copied from above. I went to my calculator. I'm going to even show you. I went to my calculator by going to my calculator again. Here's my calculator. Okay, I did 0.25 times 0.75 over 50 plus 0.35 times 0.65 over 40. I got 0 0.971. So what does this mean? What is that? Well, the typical difference in sample proportion of red crackers I feel really racist saying red crackers. I don't know why. Uh, a typical difference of red crackers uh, differs from the mean of negative 0 0.01 by about 0 0.971. If we're saying that this sampling distribution is approximately normal, that also means that any a typical diff if you um, took a sample um, sampling from the sampling distribution, that's getting confusing now. 68% of the time, you should get something between uh, negative 0.2 and 0 percent. Uh, uh, in the difference of sample proportions between 20, negative 20% 20 and 0%. Um, also, uh, if you keep playing by those, uh, if you keep playing by those 68, 95, 99, 7 rule, then you're going to see between negative 30 and positive 0.1, that's going to happen. Uh, you're going to get a difference in sample proportions in that range sometime around 95%. So it all comes back to the normal sampling distribution. So that's all I have for you today. Um, enjoy. Get to work on your sampling, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.